Welcome to my channel. My name is Bloodstained Wings. I thought we could do a cute painting together. So I got my brushes out and I painted this. It's a cute, spacey, sci-fi kind of fantasy painting of some manta rays in space. And if you guys want to bring out your oil paints and paint along with me, please feel free to do so. It doesn't have to be on a hexagonal canvas. It could be on any size canvas that you would like, and I'll show you how to do it. All right, let's go. Um, so what we're going to do first, I'm going to show you my canvas or my palette. Um, so I have here uh, some of the goop that I use. I call it goop. Um, it is Neo Maglip by Gamblin. Um, and uh, it's got a jelly kind of consistency. Then I also have, um, right here, I have titanium white, then I have alizarin crimson, and then I have some transparent yellow. It's very important that this is a transparent yellow. And then I have Prussian blue on the end here. And we're just going to do a kind of fantasy, sci-fi kind of look that is going to be like very spacey. I thought the hexagon shape would really complement that kind of design. So I'm going to start by covering the whole thing in the goop. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. The green tape is just to prevent me from painting my table. So once you have a nice, even, thin coat, we can then start adding the base colors that we're going to paint everything with. Um, so I'm going to start with the tra um, transparent yellow. And I'm just going to put it in the top corner here because that's what I feel like it should be. That's my personal thing. You can put it wherever you would like, but um, yeah, as you saw from the opening, uh, that's what this is going to look like. Now this is a transparent yellow, so you're not going to see anything, which is fine. Um, I'm going to go into, uh, I think I'm actually going to mix the transparent yellow using my palette knife with some of the alizarin crimson, just to make a kind of peachy color. Okay. So it's a little bit less all out red. I thought that would make, just now thought that that would make a nice transition color. So I'm just gonna grab that and put that outside of the yellow that I have there. Oops, I hit the camera, I'm sorry. There you go. <laughs> and now I think I'll make another mixture um, but this time I'm going to take some of the Prussian blue and I'm going to take the alizarin crimson and there's about twice as much alizarin crimson as there is Prussian blue, but it's still a very blue purple. And I'm going to use this brush again, haven't cleaned it, and we're going to go right into that color and we're just going to cover the bottom. Now, Prussian Blue is a much stronger color than Alizarin Crimson, and Alizarin Crimson is a much stronger color than the yellow, so as a result we have a nice gradient here, and I'm just going to make sure that that's a nice gradient um, by going in with um, a different brush. This is a clean, dry brush, and I'm just going to try to make sure that the transition from the yellow to the red is nice and smooth, and I think it was about here-ish. And then we're just going to keep that swirly motion going as we blend into the mixture of the Lizard and Crimson with the Prussian Blue and hopefully have a nice gradient going on. Looks like we do because my brush is no longer clean. So, I'm just going to kind of get the excess off that brush. It's still mostly clean but 
well, it's still dirty, but it's clean-ish. And that's what we're looking for, is clean-ish. So now, I'm going to take a fan brush, and I'm gonna just do some nice, happy little clouds. Bob Ross style. I'm actually gonna try to do it and blend it out a lot, because um, I kind of want it to look like a vortex. Um, I'm clearly painting this, and then you're seeing the intro. <laughs> but that is the plan that I'm going for. Um, so yeah, we're going to start like that, and I'm just going to blend the crap out of that. And we're going to see how it ends up turning once we pull that through. I hope you guys are enjoying the sounds of the paintbrushes. There we, go. we want to keep this mostly dark um, because it is supposed to be in space. Um, so I'm just uh, so I blended the shit out of that basically um, in an attempt to kind of keep it really dark. And then I'm just gonna take ah, oh, there's not enough there. That's okay. I'm gonna take a little bit more of the white. And I'm gonna do a little bit more up there, and then I'm gonna also do a little bit down here. Now we added the color underneath, so as a result, this is gonna turn colors down here if we did everything correctly, which we'll find out in a moment. There we go, I just wanted to bright up that part there a little bit. And I'm just gonna blend out the bottom of this. And then we're gonna come back and fluff up the top. And again, just like here, we're gonna blend it out until it basically doesn't exist. There we go, and now we're gonna just fluff up the tops. There. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, but over here. Oh, it's really picking up the red now. There we go. And once again, just like the other side, we're gonna blend out the bottom until it basically disappears. But I hope you guys are having a lovely day today. I hope this video finds you well. I'm real excited to have you guys paint along with me. It's always fun to paint. Like Bob Ross says, it's always a good day when you paint. That's nice right there. Let me get another row down here. There we go. I'm just going to use little tiny circles to kind of make some shapes happen. And you can see it's starting to pick up that purple color at the bottom. Hopefully it's showing up on camera. Hopefully it's not too blown out. Oils are very reflective and a little bit hard to capture, but... Lightly fluff that up there. There, that's a nice happy cloud. Let's put another one right here. I ran out of paint. I ran out of paint. There we go. And now we can just fluff out the bottom. Just 
Be real gentle with your fluffing. Make sure you don't make them blend all the way away. I want them to still have some existence to them. I think I'm gonna clean off my big brush just a little bit because it's got some of that purple in it. I'm just kind of knocking off the excess here on a paper towel. And then I'm going to actually grab some more of that white. I think I just want to have a little one up here and I, I think I should have had that before and I didn't because I was afraid, but I'm going to pop that guy right in there. You should never let your fears stop you from being exciting when it comes to paintings. Bob Ross always talks about the bravery test. You want to make sure you're passing that bravery test by always challenging yourself to do something that you think you might not be able to do. Just, just go ahead and do it. Add a little bit right there. And then maybe a little one on this side too, just to... Now be very careful if you're going backwards like I am, because you don't want to ruin the tops of your lovely clouds down here. So you want to just very gently mix that about. Might be a little more fluffy than the other ones, and that's okay. It kind of looks like Nero. <laughs> that's what you want your clouds to do. You want your clouds to remind you of things. Like, ooh, one looks like a bunny or something. It's, that's what you want. You want your clouds to do that. Because real clouds do that. And you know that if you got that right, then you definitely got your painting right. There we go. Beautiful. So now we're going to do the fun bit. And the fun bit is that we're going to take... Ooh, a fan brush here with a little bit of white on it and we're gonna dip it in a little bit of paint thinner you know, it's not dripping off of the brush here it is still the thickness that of before but it's thinner now <laughs> um, and I'm gonna take a clean palette knife and I'm just gonna splatter everything and it's gonna go everywhere so you know be aware of that. We're just going to do that right now, and it's going to add some stars. And if you want to control where they're going, you'll just bring your your um, palette knife and fan brush combo like closer to the surface. So let's say if I wanted to have something more along like this, I'll just go right up close to it, and that'll make sure they go in and around here in a more heavy way. Um, so that it looks more like there's stars there as opposed to other places. And I'm going to do the same up here. And there you go. And now you want to make sure that they are not necessarily all sparkling in the same places. You want to make sure that there are some places that are, you know, have more stars in them and some places that have less. And now, I thought it would be really nice to use the rest of this purple color, I'm going to thin it down on my liner brush here and I'm going to pop in some manta rays or sting rays, depending on, you know, how accurate you want to be with all the things. Now if you're doing this, you can put anything you'd like. You want to put octopuses in your sky, you feel free. I'm going to put sting rays. I'm going to just move this a little bit. Whoops. There you go. Now you get a little bit of a better angle here. Although this is blown out, but you know, dig, you win some, you lose some. So I'm gonna get in real close under here. I'm just gonna do a little curve. That's how you start, a little curve like that. And then you wanna have a little point. And give it a little point. There we go. 
Now you want to fill that in. Now I am using the dark purple color. You can use black if you would like. I like to use the colors that I already have on my canvas as opposed to grabbing more. So that's why I grabbed that. So there's our little wing. Let's give it a little head here. and then following through with the tail. Beautiful. And now we can do another. Have this guy go in like that. This part is kind of quiet, but I hope you still enjoy it. I know I'm enjoying it. There we go. And I'll just come in here and pattern up the head a bit. There we go. Well, we have an upward wing guy. Let's have that go right here. So, it's more like that. And then, there we go. We're just gonna fill it in. And fatten up the head. And that's all there is to it. We'll add maybe a little one right there. Now you can have as many or as few in your world as you would like. Ooh, this guy's got a little bit of a really fat head there. There we go. That's okay. He's allowed to have a fat head if he wants to, right? Everybody is. We'll have another upwards guy right here. Right there. There we go. It's a little bit wonky. Let's just fix that. There we go. That's better. There we go. Yeah, we got a whole little family here. I don't know what a family of stingrays is called. Off the top of my head, I have no idea. I'm gonna have one more. And have him do that. Feel free to leave in the comments below what the name of a family of manta rays is called. I know it's like a school of fish. Is, is it a school of manta rays? It's a pod whales. Is it a pod of manta rays? Who knows? Someone in the comments will, hopefully. Oops. 
just wanted to darken this part a little bit and I went and messed it up. Ah, there we go. Nicely fixed. There we go. So I thought we would do a quick little painting right there for you guys. Now I will be signing this once it is dry with a different medium um, because that's how I like to sign my paintings. Um, but um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'll try to make sure that I do another painting for you guys soon. Um, oh, I should highlight this. That's a good idea. It's a good idea, me. Good job, me. I'm just going to grab a little bit of white, still mixed with the paint thinner, the goop, as I call it. And I'm going to mix it with a little bit of the white, but not too much of the white, just a little bit. It's going to turn a lovely lavender color, and we're just going to highlight the backs of these guys. Just a little bit. Or the fronts of them. Depending on where the light is hitting them. You want to keep in mind our light source here is up the top here. So that's where these guys are being lit from. That's very important to keep in mind for when your painting is where your light source is. Especially when doing things like mountains. Uh, keep in mind where the light source is and what kind of light source you have. And there we have it. Now you guys might not be able to see that very well here, but I'm sure I'll get it nice for the intro. So, thank you so much for joining me, and uh, I uh, have all these things to say. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for supporting and for watching my video. Um, exclamation mark link tree will not work, but I will make sure to have a link in the uh, below in the comment or in the details sections um, where uh, the link tree is so that you can get to my Patreon or to my Instagram or my Etsy or my website. Um, all those things exist. <laughs> um, and uh, for anybody who chooses to support me, there are many rewards to all of my Patreons. Um, and uh, the lovely list scrolling by is currently the list of Patreons that I have to be super grateful of. Thank you so much for everyone's support. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And we'll catch you next time. Uh, this video, by the way, was not sped up at all. This is real time how long it took me to make a video. I hope you have yourselves a wonderful evening or a wonderful day. Or a wonderful week. And I'll put, we'll catch you guys next time. And remember, you not only are loved, but you deserve to be loved. <laughs>